Today on Rescue Vet, a white Labrador retriever has developed a mass in his neck. After an invasive surgery, will biopsy results reveal that it's cancer or is it a treatable infection? We love Gordon and we want him to be healthy and live a long, happy life. Dr. Berger makes a house call to one of his regular clients to investigate a goat's bloated abdomen. Will a fatal heart disease be mistaken for a pregnancy or will the arrival of babies be imminent? Parasites can fill up the intestinal tracts to look like she might be pregnant. Parasites cause anemia, and anemia causes death. Anthony Sitton has driven two hours from Florence, South Carolina to veterinary specialty care with his five-year-old white Labrador retriever, Gordon, who has developed a lump on his neck. Since antibiotics have been unable to treat it, at this point, the diagnosis is unknown. He's developed a uh, mass in his throat and we've taken him to the vet that we have at home in Florence and they've done a couple needle biopsies and weren't really able to determine what it was. The uh, clinic here in Mount Pleasant was recommended by our vet in Florence. Gordon's had uh, swelling the owners noticed on the neck. Um, it's been going on for a long time. Uh, it changes in size. Initially, they thought maybe it was an abscess. He has a history of being bitten by a snake in that area, but it's not been responding to antibiotics. So now they're worried that it's either some deep infection, there's maybe a foreign object there, or unfortunately that it could be cancerous. We love Gordon and we want him to be healthy and live a long, happy life. Gordon's blood is drawn to make sure it is safe for him to go under anesthesia. Anesthesia will be administered so that he is fully anesthetized before Dr. Ludwig begins surgery. So we're just getting him under anesthesia and um, then we're going to roll him up so I can see where this is and uh, get her a better idea of how to prepare the surgery site. He's a big, big boy. Okay. So the, yeah, this is the mass right here. Doesn't look all that big, but they did say that today it's a little bit smaller than it has been. All right, I think that's gonna do it. Sarah Dillo, a regular client of Dr. Berger's, has adopted three Nigerian dwarf goats within the last year. One of her female goat's abdomens appears to be increasing and decreasing in size. Up until the past few weeks, I've noticed her uh, gaining some weight. I'm assuming she may be pregnant. I'm not sure. Her weight's been fluctuating. So we contacted Dr. Berger to come out and just take a look at her, see if she is, in fact, pregnant. Um, we just want to make sure that it's not something that could be dangerous for her and that it's something we can treat if it is. Dr. Berger will examine Sarah's goat, Shy to see if she is expecting. However, there is a chance that parasites or even a fatal heart disease could be mistaken for pregnancy. She was showing a nice, really well-defined tummy, and I'm not sure if it's getting smaller. I can't really tell. It looks to appear to be getting smaller. Um, she's kind of gaining and losing weight. Anytime the abdomen's swollen, we're, we're looking for, for three things, basically. We're looking for pregnancy, which is what we hope for. Two, we're looking for an accumulation of fluid from the heart not being able to pump and keep up with the oxygen demands. And, and the third thing is parasites, because the parasites can fill up the intestinal tracts to look like she might be pregnant. 
parasites cause anemia, anemia causes death. We always want to check their heart because one thing that happens with goats, just like people, is, uh, is some of them are prone to cardiomyopathy, which is a genetic disease of the heart. Right. So you can actually mistake fluid in the abdomen for a baby in the abdomen. I see. Unfortunately, cardiomyopathy in goats is not a really treatable thing. What happens is the heart dilates because it thinks it needs to get bigger to pump more, but it's actually getting bigger and getting weaker. Dr. Berger is listening to Shai's heart for signs of a heart disease that can be mistaken for pregnancy. I'm listening to her heart just to make sure that she doesn't have any murmurs or arrhythmias, signs that she could have something going on inside. We'll also listen to her chest to take advantage of listening and making sure there's no signs of pneumonia or any kind of fluid buildup in her lungs that could be secondary to a heart issue. So you can actually mistake fluid in the abdomen for baby in the abdomen, but her heart sounds absolutely perfect. So okay. she'll let us take a feel of her abdomen without being too upset with us. Thankfully, no signs of heart disease are present. Dr. Berger will now examine the abdomen to see if Shy appears to have parasites or is in fact pregnant. By feeling around her abdomen, trying to isolate the uterus, we may be able to get a sense of if she is pregnant, how far along she's pregnant, and how many babies she might have. And right here where my right hand is, I feel the horn of the uterus, and I feel a head. So it's about the size of a ping pong ball, maybe a little bigger. So basically right here. So right where you're pregnant. Thinking. So that is a baby there. Yay. So she is pregnant. Um, it wasn't anything wrong. There was no bloat or issues like that. Uh, it seems like a normal pregnancy, so we're really happy. And on the left side. Here, mommy. I think I feel a baby that's upside down backwards. That's not a problem right now. So there's two in there. So oh, twins. wow. Awesome. Dr. Berger being able to feel the babies in there, and he could tell how they're, you know, how they're laying. And the moment he said there was two in there, it was like, oh my God, you know, you only expect one to be in there. So we do have two babies. Looks like we're gonna have twins. It's always fun to see people's reaction when they know they're gonna have twin babies. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see Sarah because I think this is her first time that she's gonna witness the birthing of the goat. So it's it's always pleasing to see how happy she can be. Now, should I separate her from everybody before she has the baby? I would. Okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he's still somewhat interested in her. Right. He did recommend that a couple weeks before she's due, we separate her because they can become aggressive towards the end of the pregnancy, and we just don't want any harm done to the babies. In addition to keeping the father away from Shy during the last few weeks of her pregnancy, Sarah will have to monitor her to make sure there are no other complications before or during birth. If she were to have a miscarriage, we would contact immediately, um, and in that case it would be an emergency that we'd get her seen. The really big thing is, you know, straining to have a baby and nothing coming out. So if that happens, you know, more towards the time or up to two weeks early, that's an emergency situation. Okay. We'd have to come out and either do a C-section on her or help you pull the babies out. She could, you know, go into labor and we would need assistance on getting the babies out. So I'd have to call Dr. Berger and make sure that everything was okay. I'm, I'd be terrified if we lost the babies, but first and foremost, I want to make sure that she's okay. So excited. We're gonna have twins, I can't believe it. I had no idea. <laughs> We're gonna cross our fingers, hope everything goes as planned and that the babies are healthy and that they're born healthy. They say goat gestation is three months, right. three weeks, three days, <laughs> and three in the morning. <laughs> right. I don't know why, but they always have their babies in the middle of the night. That's so. what I hear. The babies feel like they're about this long today. So at the time of birth, the babies are about an inch and a half longer. So my estimation is to have about another month to go. I'll be calling Dr. Berger as soon as the babies are born. I want him out here to see them, to check them, make sure everything's okay, and we can't wait. We're so excited. <laughs> At Veterinary Specialty Care, Dr. Ludwig is beginning surgery to determine if the mass on Gordon's neck is a foreign object, an infection, or a cancerous tumor. So I'm just going to make an incision kind of right down the middle of the neck. 
We're gonna go down to where we can see the trachea, and then we're gonna figure out what this mass is attached to. We'll look at the esophagus and the thyroid glands and the parathyroid glands and all the vessels in this area. Dr. Ludwig will remove the mass and examine the surrounding areas to see if there are other signs of infection or cancerous tumors. I'm still unsure as to what it is or what it's attached to. Um, it's definitely more to the left side of the trachea. Um, and I've seen everything kind of on the right side, the glands and uh, the trachea nerves on that side, they all look fine. I haven't seen the thyroid gland on this side. I haven't seen the esophagus yet, so we're still just kind of working around, carefully getting our way down there. So the tissue already looks abnormal. Um, it's thicker than we would normally see. It is pretty big and it's, it does look like it's at least on top of the trachea in addition to maybe being on both sides. Not only is the tissue thicker than normal, but the size of the mass in Gordon's neck is also cause for concern. What seems like that mass is out, once I get everything closed up, I'll go ahead and section into it, see a little bit better what it looks like. And now I'm just kind of going back through, just palpating, making sure that I haven't missed anything. I can see the right thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, the right side of the larynx or the voice box, the right side of the trachea, and that all looks pretty normal. So I do think most of our issue is now gonna be on this left side. It's an area that is a little bit nerve wracking to work in because you have the trachea, the esophagus, some important nerves and blood vessels. No foreign objects have been found in Gordon's neck. However, at this point, Dr. Ludwig is still unsure if the mass is an infection or a cancerous tumor. She is hopeful that by removing the mass, nothing will spread to the rest of Gordon's body. Gordon seems like the kind of dog who's gonna wake up and act like nothing ever happened. Exactly. It's been an hour since Gordon's surgery and he is already awake and alert. After we got everything closed, I went back and kind of cut into the stuff that I took out, and it was like a cystic thing filled with brown fluid. I'm turning some of that fluid into the lab for culture because obviously the antibiotics he's been on haven't been working, so to see you know, what it will be sensitive to. Um, and then we're still gonna submit it for biopsy just to know everything because sometimes there can be fungal infections you know that, that aren't going to be something you pick up on a culture at this point I'm hoping it's not cancer after just a few hours of recovery Gordon may be able to go home later today it's been two months since dr. Berger's visit with Sarah's goat shy and the babies have finally arrived however it is uncertain that they both are 100% healthy Dr. Berger, how, how are, are you? you? I hear you have some babies. I do. She had her two babies um, about two nights ago. Oh, great. And Any issues? No, none. Did we, did we able to witness it? Or? I wasn't. She had them in the middle of the night. Um, They'll hide it from you. Yep. It was actually in the middle of the night, about 4 a.m. I was sleeping. Um, had, I wished I had set an alarm clock. Um, and I missed it. Oh, so cute. Are they boys or girls? Have you checked? Uh, I haven't checked. Hi, Mama. You're protective, huh? <laughs> I'm one. Mama has been nursing them, letting them nurse? Yes. And pass the afterbirth okay? Yes. Okay, good. It's quite a mess. But... Quite a mess, yes. <laughs> I feel very lucky that something didn't go wrong. Um, I have heard from many people about babies being breached, and if you're not out there to help the mom, that it can be uh, deadly for all of them, the babies and the mother. Although the babies appear to be in good health, Dr. Berger will still need to do a full examination. Oh, it's okay, little one. Hello. You got a leaf in your mouth? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a little girl. Oh, yay. Let's take a look in your mouth. So now I'm just checking her soft palate to make sure it's 
good and her teeth are coming in very well. It's just the first checkup, first of many. Okay. Right now I'm just checking for any arrhythmias, right. any heart murmurs, any signs of infection in the chest. Other than a little bit of nervousness, the heart and lungs sound healthy. I'm just check her joints. And her umbilical cord looks good. Let's take a look at this one. And this one is also a girl. Two Yay. girls. No boys. That's exciting. It's all right. It's okay. Let's take a quick look. Good. Perfect. So that sounds perfect. No murmurs, no arrhythmias. Because of the possibility of parasites being transmitted from mother to babies during pregnancy, Dr. Berger will give the goat babies a dewormer for safe measure. So this is a wormer that gets all the parasites that they could possibly have. Okay. So I wanted to do this now, and then we'll do it again in four weeks. Sounds good. And they're pretty good for it. They are. Oh, what a good baby. Okay, little baby. Your turn. Little baby. Okay. That's good. <laughs> That's my first banana flavor dewormer ever. After a full examination, both the goat babies are signed off on a clean bill of health. Okay, mommy, here you go. So, two really healthy babies. Awesome. That's really nice. That's exciting. I absolutely adore them. <laughs> they are the cutest thing in the whole world. I'm just happy that they were healthy, and uh, when I walked out there and saw them jumping around, and I, I was just overjoyed. It's amazing to see something this uh, this beautiful born. You know, I mean, it's just it was a miracle. In six weeks, Dr. Berger will return for a checkup to monitor their growth and development and start the babies on their vaccines to prevent them from getting viruses and diseases. So everybody looks great. You got this healthy looking baby who's definitely a little feisty. Wants his mama, wants her mama. Um, mama looks good, she's letting the babies nurse. Uh, the babies are nursing well, they don't appear to have any kind of congenital defects. She's kept the environment very clean, provided hay, clean water, shelter, so she's done a great job. It's just amazing um, that this is a little living creature and it's adorable. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic, I wish everybody could experience this. Little baby goats make me make me want to have a yard full of them, but unfortunately, that's not possible. Look at little, baby little baby goats want their mamas too. There you go. All right. It didn't hurt the baby. Okay. All right. After a remarkably fast recovery from surgery, Dr. Ludwig has decided to send Gordon home with his owners. So I'm going to talk to the owners about how the surgery went, what I found, and um, we're basically going to have to wait for the results of the biopsy and the culture, but right now I'm hopeful that it's going to be something infectious, inflammatory, not necessarily cancer, but um, we're going to have to wait about a week to find those results. Okay, you ready? So the, the incision is all right down here. Okay. Um, you can kind of look under and you see right there, you see one of the staples. So I really would like to keep it covered and that's, you know, it'll protect the incision from him scratching at it. 
but also just because I don't want it to get swollen. Yeah. Um, so I'd like that to stay on until the staples come out, okay. which is about two weeks. The, the mass itself was basically about the size of an egg. Um, it was thick, really thick white tissue. Um, after I had everything done, I went back and, you know, cut into the mass and it was filled with brown fluid. So I think that, to me, makes it more likely to be an infectious thing than a cancerous thing. Well, that's good. That's um, good. But obviously we have it turned in for biopsies and cultures. And uh, so within about a week, we should have some answers as to what it is. Great. Well, thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. Right. And obviously give us a call, you know, if you have any troubles when you get home, because there's always somebody here, so. Um, but I think I think the only trouble we're gonna have is keeping him quiet. That's right. Yeah, that's his thing anyway. Yep. He's the whiner. Yeah. I think the surgery went well. Um, he recovered very quickly, and so it was great to be able to get him home the same day. And so now it's just a matter of waiting for the biopsy results and the culture results. All right, all right, calm down. Come on, let's go over here. I'm hoping that it's just an infection. It would be uh, very saddening to find that it was you know, some type of cancerous material that, that is gonna require further care and maybe affect Gordon's quality of life. There he goes. He's home. no cancer it was all infection we did have to call in a different special antibiotic for this type of infection and I think the combination of getting the whole thing out exposing it to the air and the antibiotic is going to be a cure for him it was great to be able to have a patient who the owners really love and wanted the best outcome and to have it turn out to be the best for him that he's going to be cured of his problem and live a long healthy life